Hey everyone, let's talk a little bit about what comes before the flooring installation. How are we gonna know when this floor is ready to be installed? important thing that I tell people, uh, and if you don't pick up on anything else, the most important thing is read the manufacturer's instructions. Industry guidelines, NWFA guidelines, those all tend to bow to the manufacturer's instructions. Manufacturer is the one who's tested the floor. They know what the product is designed to do. A lot of products come with the instructions in the box. Uh, if they're not there, they're usually on the website or a place like that. talk a little bit about what we're going to do to make sure that the floor is ready to be installed and that the subfloor is ready to accept the flooring. The general rule of thumb when you're talking about floor and subfloor is you want to make sure that the house environment is correct. The HVAC is on and um, the moisture and temperature are within the specs and parameters that the manufacturer has um, put in their installation instructions. The other general rule of thumb with the subfloor is four things. You wanna make sure that the subfloor is clean, so it's free of obstructions, it's dry. Um, you wanna make sure the moisture is within the limits um, that are allowed, uh, that it's structurally sound, so you don't have movement, you don't have um, squeaking or anything like that. That all gets taken care of beforehand and you wanna make sure it's flat. Any product you get is gonna tell you um, the tolerances for how out of flat that subfloor can be and you just wanna make sure you're definitely within those tolerances. So today specifically we have an engineered floor. We've got a 3 8 engineered product made by Realwood Floors. Because it's an engineered product, uh, you're not actually going to acclimate the floor like you would a solid floor. So you're not going to open all the boxes and expose it to the environment. You're gonna bring it into the house, you're going to um, stack it and leave it in the boxes until you're ready to install. You do wanna bring it in early because you do want the floor to acclimate for temperature. You want it to reach the same temperature as um, the ambient uh, temperature inside the house. The specific instructions for this product state that the house should be between 35 and 55 percent relative humidity. And then the other thing we want to make sure is that the temperature is within range as well. So for this product, again, uh, the instructions say between 60 degrees and 80 degrees. got a thermo hygrometer. These are fairly inexpensive um, to get. They just read temperature plus humidity. So when I come into the job site, what I'm gonna do first thing is I'm going to make sure that this is reset. If it's been sitting in my car or my van, um, I don't want a record of those readings. So I'm gonna pull the battery out, put it in, and then I'm just gonna set it on the subfloor, and then I'm just gonna let it average out and start reading to make sure I'm within those parameters. The next thing um, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my moisture meter. I'm gonna make sure that the subfloor is, again, within the specs that the manufacturer wants. So for this specific product, because we're doing a wood subfloor today, they don't wanna see that wood subfloor greater than 13% moisture content. They want the uh, subfloor to be also within 4% of the wood floor. So I'm gonna start with this and I'm gonna go through the floor and I'm gonna take readings. Generally, the rule for readings on that is take 20 readings per thousand square feet. So I'm gonna go through and uh, figure out what kind of subfloor I have, make sure my moisture meter is set correctly, and then I'm gonna take readings and make sure that I'm not over that 13% and that I'm also within 4% of the flooring. Okay, so we're gonna check the subfloor for moisture. I've got my scanning moisture meter here. Make sure you're on the right setting. It's easy to forget um, to switch that. So I've set this to the OSB setting because we're looking at um, OSB in here. And I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna take readings anywhere um, that we have a good exposed subfloor like that and make sure that we're under 13%, we're within 4% of the floor. You just wanna put the moisture meter on the ground. You want to just lightly push with your finger. Don't push too hard and then um, take your reading right there.
next thing we want to look at is flatness. We want to make sure that the subfloor is flat to within the tolerance of this product. That's especially important whenever you have a thinner product because a thinner product will tend to show imperfections in that subfloor um, even more. For this specific product, the manufacturer wants to see a deviation of 3 16 of an inch or less within a 10 foot area or an eighth of an inch or less within a six foot area. So we want to make sure that um, the subfloor does not peak up or dip down more than those amounts anywhere throughout um, this installation. So in order to make sure that the subfloor is flat, there are a lot of different ways to do it. Um, easiest way I think is to use a laser level and then be able to go around and measure where the laser hits. Today, we're gonna to be doing it the old fashioned way. I've just got a straight box level and all I'm gonna do is drag it across the floor. Anywhere that I see a gap between the level and the floor, I can just take a tape measure and then I can put it down and I can measure how big of a gap that is. And again, we're looking for um, a gap that's no bigger than 3 16 within a 10 foot span or an eighth of an inch within a six foot span. final two things we want to look at are structurally sound and clean. So we just want to make sure anywhere um, the wood panels of the subfloor are loose, that those get anchored down. Anywhere there's a squeak or a creak in it, we want to um, screw or glue that down as well because once the floor goes over it, then we don't um, have the opportunity to fix those problems. And we also just want to clean the subfloor. We want to get any loose dirt or anything up off the subfloor. So we're gonna vacuum and, and inspect the subfloor to make sure it's clean, structurally sound. Hopefully all of that gives you a really good idea for how to prep for your subfloor. In summary, subfloor prep, you wanna make sure that's clean, dry, flat, and structurally sound. For the flooring, the most important thing is making sure that you're reading the manufacturer's instructions. For an engineered floor specifically, um, the most important thing that you can do is make sure that the ambient environment and, uh, and the subfloor is within both the temperature and humidity and moisture requirements that they give you. You wanna make sure that the house isn't gonna to be too dry, um, or too wet, one of the two. Thanks for watching this video. I hope that helps you guys get set up to have a perfect install.